how to be better at tanking in Battlefield games. As you all probably already know, I'm into my tanking in Battlefield games and think myself fairly good at it, especially in Battlefield 4. Battlefield 1 was a little bit different because of the way that they set up the tanks. It didn't really have that same feel, partly due to the fact it was World War 1 and partly because they went for a slightly different mechanic. Even so, there are some techniques that you can transfer over from previous Battlefield games into BF1, or if you're sticking with BF4, these will still be useful for you. I have plenty more in-depth tank reviews and guides, tips, tricks, that sort of stuff on my channel. You can find them all in a playlist down below, be listed in the description, and you might also come across some, or you might have watched some before, that have helped you in the past. So let's start off with a Battlefield 4 clip. We'll watch this one for a couple of minutes and then switch over to some BF1. Now I'm playing on Dawnbreaker, arguably the best tank map out of the vanilla maps. I think Zavod's personally my favourite, but Dawnbreaker has a lot of good things about it. Lots of hard cover, lots of decent angles. Apart from, as you can see now, you do get campers on roofs with lock-ons, but you can easily get around that. As you saw there, I was carefully using a mixture of APS and cover to make sure I didn't get hit because the last thing you want to be doing in a tank is getting stranded. I pick up my gunner here and go for a bit of a kill streak. This is just kind of a more exciting part of the game where we got a nice mixture of kills, gunner and driver. Now, number one, you have to have yourself a gunner. It's not so important in Battlefield 1 because of the repairing mechanic and the fact that it's a lot more campy on that game. But in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3, you have to have a gunner. Now, the main reason for this is that they can get out and do the repping while you stay in and do the killing or the other way around. You might choose that the gunner stays in and the uh, the driver gets out and does the repping. Either way, it's nice to have two people in one tank. The gunner can also watch out for C4. They can get a better angle looking up. They can go in third person and see lots of stuff. And if you're on comms, it's basically like having a second pair of eyes. The incendiary grenade is also insanely useful in the tank. Some people opt for proximity scan because that way they can just make sure nothing's around them and they can see stuff. But for me, the incendiary grenade is what you want. Now, here's an interesting tactic that I've just used here. Moving on to the flag over at Alpha, as I'm crashing into a lot of stuff, you saw me turn the tank around. Now, that's because I don't want to be shot in the back. Now, you'd think if I turn myself, I'm also going to be at risk from Delta flag. But what we do as a tank team there is I will turn and the gunner will always watch behind. They will always watch where the rear of the tank is exposed. You can also see here as we ride up to this flag and get inside Alpha, which is also a really good tactic on Dawnbreaker, my gunner has straight away, without even asking, dropped an incendiary grenade into that camping little spot, lighting the whole place up. Now, he might not kill everybody, but he's definitely going to be damaging people. And what are they going to do when they see that? They're going to run out of the doors. And essentially, you've just emptied a flag. As you can see here, people are parachuting off the roof. There's not a huge amount you can do with that when you're in a tank you can't really get up on the roof the incendiary grenades can be used you can use the splash damage of whichever shell you've chosen i'd probably recommend the ap shell and bf4 but you can see it's a simple tactic staying on flags making sure you're cleaning the flag completely using thermal again something you don't get in bf1 but you don't really need it again just using a mixture of splash damage and the incendiary grenade to clear that section of the map out You'll also find that people quite often like to hide in corners and wait for you to leave the flag and then suddenly you'll see the flag burning again. Now this is really, really useful in BF1 as we get a pretty decent shot on that heli in the distance. But you can see in BF1 they've offered you the, the little thing at the top of the screen that tells you how many people are on a flag or what ratio of people are on a flag. In BF4 you have to be a little more clever than that. You actually have to check by driving onto the flag and driving back off the flag, seeing if it burns, if it doesn't burn. You can pretty much work out whether someone's on the flag. Now we're on to some Battlefield 1. Now my favorite tank on this game is the flanker tank, just purely because it has a turret and I think it offers a lot more in the way of traditional tanking in the sense that we've had it in BF3 and BF4 and obviously before that. But for me, I think it does offer the best kind of all rounder. You're not that good against other tanks, but to be honest, the tank v tank gameplay in this game is quite frankly appalling the tank versus infantry gameplay however is pretty dynamic the fact that you've got grenades and rocket guns so infantry have different ranges as you can see though we are getting hits and i've just been hit down to 32 hp the first thing i do is i drop myself in this building i accidentally knock it down if you notice in this game the destruction is quite exaggerated notice there's a support player so straight away i'm thinking finish the rep get him suppressed 
I know he's going to be in there somewhere, so I'm just trying to get myself an angle. He's actually run out of the building or something, but as you can see, I'm in third person most of the time as well. You don't see that in BF4, but in BF1, I'm always in third person. No thermal. I get a better view like this. Using the splash damage of the flanker tank to remove those people. Now, here's the trick with this, uh, with this game when you're tanking. You can kind of go about it like most people do. Take an artillery truck, take a heavy tank, and camp on the edge of the map and pick people off. The range is really impressive on the guns, uh, on the, the main shell and on the uh, the canister shell. People were doing it in the alpha, people were doing it in the beta. You had the howitzer tank, which was the king of that, although it was quite fun at close range because of the splash damage. But you're forced to sit back and camp because you can't rep. I mean, you get the repping uh, perk, but that's a bit of a gimmick, to be honest. You have to be complete. As you can see now, I'm trying to use it, but I'm getting lucky here that no one's pushing to attack me. In an ideal world, I'd be completely off the flag behind cover before using that. When it actually comes to repairing your tank as well on Battlefield 1, you are left in a bit of a sticky situation a lot of the time. You've got to sit there and either use the kind of in house repair tool. As you can see here, we're getting jumped by a load of infantry and. The best thing that I'd recommend for this is to back off and get yourself cover, as I'm doing here, making sure that I've always got somewhere to go, as I was caught a little bit just before. But again, with repairing, you see what I'm doing here. I'm repairing, I'm using the third-person camera to check if anybody's coming. Very, very simple stuff. Never get out of your tank to repair. It's a really stupid idea because of the way they've put the mechanics in, the, the time it takes you to get back into the tank. They don't want you to get into. The, they don't want you to get out and get back in. You need to have a gunner. So if if that's something that you want to do and you want to work with your teammates, you need to take a heavy tank or a land ship. You could get your gunner to run around after you, but I really wouldn't recommend that because they're just going to have a horrible game and get splash damage by all the grenades that are being aimed at you. So you are in, as I said, a tricky situation. If you are looking to work in tandem with a teammate, definitely take the support class with the repair tool. Maybe have somebody in with the assault class with a grenade. And I was discussing on Twitter the other day that it would be nice if we had a traditional engineer class. I don't know what was so wrong with that in Battlefield 4. You take the engineer class, you use a, a rocket gun and you use a repair tool. Uh, or you use an anti-tank grenade or you use a repair tool. So you've got those two things. There's a lot more that could be done in my opinion and it doesn't really uh, let's hand to teamwork. I know I get people arguing saying the support class is the best it's ever been in a battlefield game. I'm like, Well, it's not really, is it? Because you're dropping ammo like everybody did in Battlefield 4 and you've got a repair tool that you've never used and you've got a support gun that you're just spraying and suppressing everybody because suppression in the game is completely disgusting. Um, but there we go, that's my two cents before I get off on a rant. Again, we've got a little clip here of repairing in Battlefield 1. Attacking on the brow of the hill, I think this was part of like a 60 kill streak in the process of this one. Again, you can see I'm being really, really passive on the side of a hill camping because that's how this game is supposed to be played in the tank. The range of the guns show you that. It's the same in BF4 in a way, but the fact you can have a gunner in all your tanks kind of makes it a little bit more... You, know, you can be a little bit more aggressive and tank battles are very good as you can see i'm sitting behind the spawn this is a favorite spot for campers just using the flanker tank canister shell to mow people down my appalling aim they're not really working but you can actually use this canister shell across the map and it's also very effective against planes um as you see here i get hit by a grenade and if you look at the damage i've taken it's about 30 and that's a really good shot by that guy as well he spotted me on the map and he's led his grenade quite well so that's another 30. I know that I can only take one more, so I'm going to try and find the guy who I suspect is using K-bullets or a rocket gun. Try and take him out. Use the rocks for cover. I do actually get hit by the rocket gun. Use the repair technique. Get that guy taken down. Try and get myself a bit of an angle against the spawn uh, that's at the top. And as you can see, I've artillery truck camping because that's what you do in the RT truck. I use him as cover. I get it wrapped up and I go back in. So th that's pretty much the meta of the game. I mean, there's not too much more that you can you can do. Now, if we just go back to Battlefield 4 for a second, I'm gunning here for a guy who hasn't been tanking for a while. He's a very, very good tanker, but he had about six months off the game away from his PC. He came back, and this just shows how easy it is to, to tank in Battlefield 4 when you have a decent gunner. Admittedly, we're on the better team here because I'm here with my squad. We've got, we've got four guys or five guys here, and, you know, we like to be in vehicles, and admittedly, people say, well, you're just going to farm a server, but... I mean, we don't always win. I just post the gameplay where we do win. So that's kind of where that all comes from. I'm using a mixture of incendiary and uh, the, the primary gun. 
And as you see, we're working together. We're on comms. I'm spotting people. Thermal is OP. I, I, I will give you that because people aren't using the dice camera as you're supposed to. So it, it's not really counted very well. One thing I would say in Battlefield 4, if you are sick of a tanker killing you because of thermal, flares are there to stop it. And people don't understand this because the, the, the game is atrocious at telling you what to do, what to counter things with. Level cap will probably tell you to uh, use an MBT lore against a thermal tank. I don't really know. All I can say is use flares. If you drop a flare in front of a tank, he cannot see. He is completely blind and he has to go into, uh, into third person mode. And that's how you counter against a tank. Also, a really good technique that no one ever uses. Take a mine, put it on a flare on the floor. The tank cannot see it and you will kill a tank. Put slams behind walls. That entrance that you see on the left there with my mate who's just inside, he just got killed. Put slams just behind the doorway. So when the tank pushes in, the slams go off. As you see here, I saved my mate there. I was a bit bad not really seeing that. But again, that's the whole purpose of the gunner seat. You've got to be sneaky as an infantry to get a tank kill in this game, and that's what I like about it. It's not impossible. It's really not impossible. It's just slightly more skilled. BF1 is just throw all the grenades you have, use your K bullets, use everything you can, and spam. And, uh, I mean, that's just the way it is. But for me, it's a lot more skillful in BF4. And people who, they even have the option to take soft lamb and completely destroy a tank. A soft lamb, in my opinion, is cancerous. It's disgusting. It's so overpowered in the game. People still don't use that. They'll still be complaining about um, hacker in tank, blah, blah, blah. It's like you haven't even tried to kill us. You're just running around in the middle of a field with an RPG or an MBT law or something like that. So it, it does get a little bit frustrating at times when people do this sort of stuff. But there we go. That's just the way it is. Hopefully this guide did help you. There were a couple of things in it that I haven't mentioned before, such as the flare idea, a couple of things in Battlefield 1. Um... You really can be effective on all Battlefield games in a tank. I'd say it's way more exciting on Battlefield 4. As you can see from this gameplay, the KPM is through the roof because the infantry just can't deal with it and they don't know the, the techniques to get rid of a tank. Um, again, it's fairly similar in BF1, but more the onus is put on the tank driver, I think, than ever before because obviously the gunners either aren't there in the light tank or you, you're really struggling in a heavy tank because you're forced to camp because of the way the game is. Let me know in the comments what you think of Battlefield 1 and the tanking there. Is it something that you like? Because I've heard some people do enjoy tanking quite a lot and they are having a lot of fun with it. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.